Hey guys, today we're looking at Star Trek Online. This is a game by Cryptic and Perfect World. I'm going to be going over some of the free-to-play features that you guys can expect when it does launch in January as free-to-play. You have three basic characters, classes to pick from. An engineer, science, and tactical. Tactical being a DPS, science being heals, engineer is basically support. And they're all fun and unique to play. Uh, so, and they both basically favor different ships so the character creator is vast it's really got loads of options I mean you got all the races from the series to pick from you can make your guy look like anything if you go with the alien model you can really get into some cr <laughs> crazy looks so definitely one of the better character uh, creators out there even comparing it to champions it is definitely definitely very 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 uh, customizable and they do have loads of outfits so I mean in color skin I mean you can make your guy either real short fat how, however you want it you name it it's there and available for you to pick from for all for free so real nice feature I'm going to go over some of the UI here. This is basically your inventory, and it expands as you progress, so which is a nice feature. So it does get bigger. Here's basically the in-game currency, and you get credits and stuff. Can buy various things. The the latinum is you can play these uh, mini games to get it, and then the lithium. The lithium is the major currency, and you get this stuff basically, and you can buy cryptic points with it from other players or you can sell your cryptic points to get more dilithium so either way it's a win-win situation for free to play and pay to play so you can get anything in the C store just by playing the game and buying the the C points uh, it's really awesome the exchange is not open yet but it will be when it launches so I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rates are in this basically you got some uh, this is your crafting in the game in the in-game crafting it's it's not really you can't really make something you can make a lot of epic items but a lot of the the quest rewards and the rating rewards and stuff is a lot better than it but you can really make some cool stuff while you're progressing and it does have a crafting system at least as you can see here there's a fleet which is a guild system uh, it's pretty decent I mean, they got uh, fleet uniforms and stuff, so that's pretty solid. Uh, the C store's got tons of stuff to buy, and like I said, you can get all this stuff. Basically, if you play the game long enough, you'll be able to purchase anything in here. If you just stack the dilithium and buy the the C points, the cryptic points. The game has PVE queues, so you can join random uh, random players and PvP queues ground and uh, space PvP so that's pretty cool basically I'm looking at the duty officers it's a new feature they just added with the last update and basically you get a bunch of officers and you can assign them to do tasks uh, and you can they do this you, you don't interact except by sending them on the missions and then just waiting them and some of these missions can take like hours or two days so you log off and they can still be doing it so you, they, it runs in the background basically and you get rewards you get the lithium um, and you and, but it's kind of a mini game because you have to pick the right officer to do you know the right kind of missions and there's always a, a list of uh, missions in different sectors and you know and what's on the spaceboard so or the shipboard so it does give you a feel like you are the captain and you are directing uh, your officers or whatever to to do different assignments so really solid field feature we're looking at the quest journal here basically and they've added they've updated this and it's really nice I mean you can go uh, and replay missions and you can also once you got a mission you can hail them and you can transwarp which is a real cool feature you don't even have to fly there half the time anymore you can just warp there and you're ready to the planet uh, whatever you gotta do so that is an awesome feature because before this you would have to fly uh, through space which was okay I mean that, that was fun too but to get there 
you know, right away, that's a nice feature. So, good job there, Cryptic. You got your available quest, and you're in progress, basically. And they got community offer, uh, authored of uh, missions, basically. This is the, the foundry, and it is most excellent. It is definitely one of the uh, key features of the game now. People, uh, players can make their own content. Now, free-to-play can't make it, but they'll be able to play any created content that the pay-to-play players have made. And some of this stuff is really decent. I mean, worthy of the TV series episode. So, and there's thousands of missions to do. So, it's definitely worth checking out. Here's your basic character sheet, and you got items that you get. You got your shields and your body armor, and there's kits that give you different abilities. You can have two guns um, to switch from at any time just by pressing the Z key, and you get various weapons by doing missions and stuff. And there's a lot of cool uh, particle effects with these weapons, stuns, and you know, big AOE cannons and stuff. Here's your ship um, character sheet, and you got the you know, front weapons, the rear weapons, you know, deflector dish and consoles that, you know, buffs it up a little bit. And each one of your officers, you can equip them with gear also. And, and that's a real nice feature because four of these guys are going to be going with you on your away missions when you land on the ground to do the ground game. And it's very cool. Uh, and they have different abilities, so you have a, a large variety of uh, officers to pick from that you want to be on your ship. I mean, here we're looking at the skill tree, and they revamped this also during the last update. And it's real solid uh, update. It's a lot easier than the last one. Uh, the maneuver, it's got basically, you got your ground, you can buff, you can uh, buff your space combat, you know, your engines. It's it's really detailed if you want to get into it. And you can respect, so if you, if you make a mistake. These are all, the, these blue officers, they're just waiting to be, uh, <laughs> They're candidates that I haven't even put in because I've stuck with the ones I originally created. So you can switch, and, and they come with their own uh, special buffs and stuff for ground and, like I said, space. So they give you abilities to use in your uh, hotbar. Here we're looking at ship interior. This was the new one when I when I made Admiral. I went ahead and selected this one. Every character will be able to get a ship interior when they rank up. Usually it's three per ship that they've assigned and you'll be able to pick between those three or mismatch. You can keep the one from the original that you got. So a lot of customization there. It doesn't really serve much purpose but it's cool for uh, it's just cool that it's there. I mean you can tell. I mean, that's nice that they gave that to the fans that's for sure. Here's some of the space combat. It's a lot of fun. The space game, I think, is a lot more fun than the ground, but they have revamped the ground, so uh, you can see all the abilities I got on my action bar, and these are from my officers and myself, because they, when you rank up, you promote them, and they get more abilities, so, you know, it's really fun. The game basically works around four shields around your ship, and uh, you have to you maneuver to keep your shields from, you know, once the shield's down, and then it'll hit, it'll hit the hole, so... That's basically the game, and it, it does take some practice getting used to, and it's a lot of fun. I, I really like it. I think they did an excellent job on their space game. The, the ground game, they, uh, they revamped that where it's like kind of like a third person shooter basically um, you have the option to do this because you can actually try to make headshots and stuff and it's an, it's a nice feature as you can see right here and my uh, my officers are down there because they beam down with you and uh, you know help you kill stuff and, and they you can pick the healers the science officers or you know tactical uh, it's it's a nice feature and it's a lot of fun you know and you can customize their outfits also anytime on a uh, earth space dock and so how you want them to look so it's a real nice feature you always got somebody to go down with you even other players so 
well guys the, the game's going free to play this is just a real short look uh, at what what's going to be coming up it's a lot of fun and I think the free to play is going to make the game even a more success than it is I mean the, the game does have you know a little the, the content drought that it did have uh, but I, I really think that Perfect World is going to uh, change all that and add more to it so uh, let's hope that happens but all in all the game is fun and it's great for casual and any Star Trek fan will definitely enjoy it since it's the only thing available <laughs> really to the fan base game wise well guys if you like my review go ahead and like and subscribe and thanks for watching alright later